All right, welcome back to the channel. If this is your first time watching. My name is Matt. That's Charlie, and this here is a Cat D4. It sat out in the woods for at least 10 years, probably more, and it, it really took a toll. But I'm working my way through trying to get it fixed up so I can use it. I am still waiting on the mail service for the puller I need for that thing. So I'm just gonna keep continuing on with this transmission cover. This is an entire cover which goes over the clutch transmission and then the steering clutch compartment. And uh, it's all one piece, it's really heavy. Last week I got the clutch stuff out and I got kind of cleaned this out a little bit. So the last thing to do is this the steering clutch compartment, all the controls, which are all, you know, broken, rusted. This one's locked up, spring on the ground. And at, can I help you, dog? And uh, yeah, it's it's gonna be a little bit of work. Wait, wait, are you trying to, don't bite me, don't bite me. And uh, yeah, all right, let's get to it. Well, fortunately, like I said, I don't know if I mentioned this, but there is an entire section in the directions here about the steering clutch controls. There was no directions for the normal clutch as far as how to remove it and take it apart and put it back together. So it does look a little bit more complicated. I guess real quick before I start, though, uh, I did kind of spend some time figuring out how this thing works. So maybe I'll go over that real quick. Okay, so when you pull the clutch back, it, it uh, disengages the steering on that side. And all that does is it moves that little ball joint right there. This plugs into that ball joint. And when, when that ball joint moves, it actuates these two rods right here. And on the steering clutch, those two rods push right here. So this, this clutch pack is by default compressed, so it's, it's locked. But when you push down, then it pops apart. And then when you let go, these it pulls it back together. So pretty simple setup. All right, according to the manual, first step is taking these springs off. Well, I already got that this side done. So I just need to, uh, there's an adjusting nut. And this thing is already bent. I don't know if you can see that, but she's bent. I can't tell if that one is it. I'm assuming, well, actually, that well, one looks pretty straight. But anywho, go ahead and take this off. Okay, well. Okay, next up is taking these things off. This one works. This one's frozen, which is probably why that's broken off. That's not bad. Get a little stuck. Let me hose it down here with some juice. Should probably actually get a lot of this because there might be a lot of frozen stuff in here. A little pre-soak. Looks le less rusty when you do that too. Makes you feel better about yourself. Got one off. Says you have to take these keys out too. I'll do that in a sec. Let's get this one started. Yeah, that one's that one's pretty rusty. Let me see if I can. Oh yeah. Oh, I got it. Oh, I just hit my finger. Ow. Now it's spinning. Let's see if I can hammer this wedge in a little bit and get this to break open. And that, then with that, maybe I can pull it with another wedge. Nah, it does not want to budge. It's not something, oh, there we go. Oh yeah. Just don't want to be too hard on this thing. So on the other one, I didn't show it, but what I did is I just hammered it on back and forth and kind of worked it off. So I'll try it again. Yeah, see how much now it went farther? That seems to work pretty well. Oh, 
Ah, see? Just take a little bit of forward, back and forth. I cannot get this key out. Uh, I don't know. I'll have to get it out. I'll see, if, see if I can get this whole thing out and then I can take it off in the bench where it's, I have more space to work. Anyway, I need to remove these cotter pins and these bolts. And then I just need to unbolt all these bolts here and then this whole thing should come out. We'll see. If you're wondering why the camera angle is changing, it's because I keep knocking the camera over when I'm working here. Okay, so those pins are out, and then I just need to get these. Now that's like a nice clean shear there. have to take is this coming out with it oh nice okay I don't have to take that key off then Ugh. I think this is supposed to come off with it but uh, oof. Well, let me hose this down and then we'll take a look there's these are bearings which are just dry dry as a bone and then this is obviously stuck on here this is a uh, stuck in a bearing, so that should give you an idea of how rusted this stuff is. So these bearings aren't really greasable uh, or oilable because the top cover covers this, and then these are up above, where nothing can get to them. So I'm assuming you're supposed to just repla replace these anytime you get in here. These roller bearings, these are just. This, oh my gosh, let me get this out of here so you can see it. Do you see all that dust coming out? Pretty rough. And then like even the, the metal cage on here is just pitted and about to break. So I'll get all these out. Really this is the last area of the dozer though that has parts to replace. I've been through everything else except for the engine. Well, I, <clears throat> I mean, the original engine I've been through, but the new engines, when they come, though this one's even worse, just completely roasted. Okay, so I still have to do the stuff. Oh my, whoo. Oh my. Now that's where they've been shooting all the grease. Yeah, this is fresh grease too. This looks not too old. So there is grease fittings here. Clearly someone's been hitting those things, and uh, that's why that's why there's really not much play in this. I mean, there's a little bit, but not even half as much as what was on the, the clutch, which does not have any grease fittings on it. So that's, uh, you know, maybe that's another point. Maybe I should add, add grease fittings to the clutch linkage. One up here, and then one on the, uh, the part that goes over there. I'll think about it. Well, the, uh, the other half of this rod is here. Um, so I'm gonna, I'll take this one out and you know, I think I just might take it to a uh, metal shop and have them just make me up a couple new ones. I mean, this is a really simple, just a couple of these uh, ends. So I think that I just might do that instead of trying to hunt down this part, <clears throat> it's gonna be way easier just to have them made and probably way cheaper. More bearings in here. Are these the same size? Looks like it. some rusted springs. The shaft off. There is a key, that's good. These shafts are really nice in here. They're, they they go in and out, but they don't. There's no almost no play. A little bit up and down. Oh, 
unfortunately these are loose. I might just make up some new ones of these. This is just, uh, looks like eighth inch pipe. Uh oh. Okay, so the, uh, the, the play I did see in this shaft was, oh, well this one's loose, but in and out like that. So I found up underneath here in this grease pit, you can see in here, first of all, there's a stopper it might be a little dark, but yeah, see that hole? That's where that spring thing that I pulled out was, and that's the stopper for this for this uh, action here. And then uh, there's a this bolt here, which you loosen, and then you can pull the shafts out. And then there's just going to be the matter. I think when I pull the shafts out, these are just going to fall out. And then I can go in here and clean up this whole area out, and uh, I think I'll pretty much be done with the case. So these should just. Yep, and it just fell out. So, the shaft looks pretty good, but we'll give it a closer look when we clean it. That key is, that key does not look like it's set in there right though, doesn't it? Let's check the other one. Yeah, it looks the same, that key. So I'll keep these, I'll keep these separate, right and left. And, uh, all right, these are out. And these things sure are greased, aren't they? Which is probably why it all came apart so easily. But uh, we'll clean that out. So I gotta clean out in there. And then I think the last thing is I gotta take that, I'll probably just weld that nut to that stud and get that these studs out because I'm gonna replace those obviously. And that's it for in there. And then I just need to get these grease fittings off. And I think I'm about done. This thing's gonna be ready for pressure washing and scrub down and uh, paint. There we go. That's a relief. These seals still look good, so I think I'm just gonna reuse these. They look, uh, they look in great shape. And it's probably a part that's hard to find. So, just a little rubber seal that's over the cap. Let me check this one out. Yeah, I mean, they're not cracked at all. And uh, they look good. So, I'll hold on to those. No gaskets on this stuff. I don't know why there's no gaskets on any of this stuff. There's not even RTV on here. There's like a little bit, there's like a remnant of RTV. Like someone took it off, peeled the RTV off and never replaced it. Okay, back here at the bench here. I need to do one more thing on here. Before I do that though, I did, uh, last in the last video I was talking about this this fiber line bushing I had in here. This was off the, the main clutch. And I actually got both the bushings pressed out. They are steel cased. And then if you see, there's a lip here. And then inside was this material, which looks like some kind of, um, I don't know what you would call it, like hemp or rope or something. It's like a, like a, it's kind of a, I don't know what the material would be but both of them had that as a lining. So it must've been some kind of uh, repair and aftermarket bushing, because this it is a steel bushing. I don't think there was any in here originally. Anyway, it was, uh, it was a pain getting those out because they, uh, they did not want to come out, that's for sure. So on this, this clutch uh, control assembly here, there's eight of these in total, these needle bearings. There's one in here right now. And there, so there's this bearing, which all of these are just horrible. And then there's this race which uh, needs to come out. This doesn't want to come out. Of course not. There we go. Try to keep this straight. No, this bearing is just frozen in here. Another rusty one. And then, oh, this one has a key, so this one should just. Well, how are you supposed to get? I got one pin out, it just fell out. But... Yeah, 
That's not going to help me though. It has to come out the other way. So I'll just keep working it back and forth. See if I can loosen it up that way. Ooh, that's kind of working. I got like a little pick under there. Oh. I don't know if it's supposed to be that worn. That looks pretty worn. Where did that other pin go? I lost it already. But uh, there's quite the wear pattern on here. So I'm gonna take this to the uh, shop and see if I can get these. Well, I don't even know yet. I mean, I don't know if this is salvageable. This thing is just so worn out that uh, I don't even know. Just look at these bearings. <laughs> it's just a big rusty mess. That thing is tight in there. Oh my gosh, all right. The only thing left are these adjusting screws. So another, just, can you hear that? I'm gonna put it up to the microphone. That's not a sound you want a bearing to make. So anyway, now that I got all that out, I'm gonna press one of these out. Uh, oh man, can I press one of these out? These races, I don't know if these are even come out. It said in the book you can replace the races, but they have a, uh, they're like, there's nowhere to grab onto there. Yeah, I mean, you can see these are pressed in and there's one hole in each bearing right there and uh, right there. Now, I would guess those holes would be for some kind of oiling system, <clears throat> like a, a grease system where you have a grease fitting and it goes in through there. This is a dry system, so <clears throat> maybe they just, I don't know why these races don't have it. According to the, the parts manual, these are all supposed to be the same part number, all eight of them. Uh, but there's, I just don't see how I'm going to get them out of there. And then as far as these, I'll have to clean these up and see how bad they are. But um, yeah, it is what it is, I guess. Let that dry so it doesn't explode. All right, it's the next day. I've been doing a little bit of research. So really there's two options open to me here. The first is I can take these old races out and I found out how to do it. I mean, it's, it's since they're completely blind, you either have to weld something to them like a valve that you pull it out or you can take a uh, acetylene torch and just get one line all the way down super cherry hot and then it'll just fold in on itself. So I can do that. I can replace all these bearings. I'm sure I could still find these somewhere. Um, and, and put it back like stock. The pro my problem with it is it's just not a good system because you cannot service any of these bearings once they're in and they're open bearings uh, because that's probably all Cat had available to him back in the day. So, you know, this machine's gonna be sitting a lot in a humid environment. I'm not gonna be using it that much. So as soon as I put them in, they're just gonna start rusting again. Not really a big fan of that. So what I think I'm gonna do is uh, this inside diameter is, it's uh, like a 10 mils narrower than one and three eighths. And these, uh, these shafts are two mils over eight, seven, five. So this is all Imperial, by the way, apologies to people that aren't from, from here. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to drill this out to one and three eighths. I'm just going to leave the races in here, drill these out to one and three eighths. And then I found a generic seal needle bearing that'll fit in here. It's, it's, you know, it's, com it's a complete unit with a race and, and, and all that that'll fit in there to that hole. It doesn't even have to be pre uh, interference fit. I mean, these, this is all held in place by gravity on the machine. So as long as you don't operate the machine upside down, they're not going to fall out or anything. And then uh, on these shafts, I need to remove two mils worth of material, which they're already so rusted and pitted. I mean, um, it's not going to be a problem to do that just with some sandpaper. In fact, on some of these, this is a 875 interior bushing. Some of these, they already fit. So that won't be a problem. So that way I'm gonna have seal bearings that aren't gonna be just soaking up dirt and water and the grease will stick around for a while. I guess that's what I'm gonna try to do. I ordered one, I ordered everything enough to do one and we'll see how that works. 
uh, before I do anything else. Otherwise, you know, like I said, it's just as soon as you fix it, it's going to be breaking by itself again. Okay, I think we're good to pressure wash this thing now. Fortunately, it's pouring down rain and cold outside, but that's, I guess that's a good time as any. I'll be using hot water for the pressure washing, but uh, really I just want to get as much loose stuff off as possible before I just kind of, I'll probably spray prime any areas where the paints come off and then I'll just uh, put on some new paint. Yeah, that freezing cold rainwater and the uh, scalding hot pressure washer water kind of balance out into a nice little, a nice average that uh, makes it somewhat bearable. So I need to go through this thing now. I need to kind of, I'm going to take all the bolts out and, and spray some WD-40 and it's going to be a while before I prime this thing. <clears throat> and any, any machine surfaces obviously need to be lubed up a little bit so it doesn't rust. You know, I just want to say it really helps if you, uh, I have kind of like a poor man's steam cleaner. If you run hot and cold out to a shower spigot, to your outside spigot, it, uh, it's pretty handy with a pressure washer. It, it helps a lot to have hot water. I got it flipped upside down just to help it uh, continue draining out. Again, I got everything sprayed out with WD-40. It's gonna be a while before I paint this thing. Um, I need to, gonna have to go over pretty much all this with a wire brush outside, cause it's just, uh, all the paint's flaking, and um, there's just so many surfaces that even the pressure washer didn't clean off. All the gasket surfaces. These four uh, bearings are four of the eight that I need. To, I'm going to try to drill out. These things are just completely toasted. I mean, you can just feel it's pretty bad. <clears throat> Everything else, though, I think is salvageable. There's nothing else that's bad on here. It's just a matter of doing a lot of prep work on it and then I'm gonna paint it. And then I think after I paint it, then I'm gonna go and start working on the underside. There's also just a ton of miscellaneous parts that all need to be cleaned up and painted. So I'm gonna be out here for a while doing this kind of stuff, all that stuff. And uh, yeah, there's a lot of work involved on this, this transmission cover. One other thing I found is this, this gasket right here, or this, this uh, cavity for this gasket, and this cavity over here are exactly the same dimension. So I found a roll of uh, that oil resistant rubber, I forget what it's called, it's like a B, it's like B-U-N-A, Buna, I don't know how to pronounce it, but um, it'll fit in here, it's, it's like the right perfect dimensions. You, there's all different dimensions that you can get, and it, it sticks, but I think I might put RTV underneath it because this is not a machine surface and neither is the one over there. So since it's all bumpy, I, I would assume oil would kind of go underneath it and then come back around. So I'll probably RTV it to that um, or I'll just RTV, once it's in I'll RTV here. I haven't decided yet, but I think that'll be a safe bet. All right, well, I think I'm gonna end the video there. Hopefully this was entertaining. I don't know how long the video is gonna be, but um, I kind of plugged through a lot of stuff this week and there's gonna be a lot of prep work to get this ready to, to get the top painted before I uh, start machining everything on below and, and putting it back together. So um, hopefully early next week that drill stuff will come so I can give a shot on putting those new bearings in for the steering clutches. And uh, I'm still waiting for the postal service on that thing. So um, hopefully that's gonna be here soon. Uh, I, you know, I got a lot of comments about talking about Squash's video on how he removes it. This is just different than a D2, guys. Um, on a D2, you have a threaded shaft in here that you can put all thread through, which is what I believe that's what Squash did. Does not work here. You have to do a polar setup like this. Um, you can, you don't have to use all thread. There's other ways to do it, but you, you just, 
you have to push and pull at the same time. Just it's, it's just a different setup. So I appreciate the comments though, and, and I know those come from a good place. Uh, people are trying to help me out, and uh, yeah, I do definitely watch Squatch's videos. Um, it's you know it's entertaining stuff. So with all that said, guys, thanks a lot for watching. I really appreciate it, and I will see you again very very soon. Hopefully, as more stuff parts start to come in. Thanks again, guys.